Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about a worrying pattern that I think will be developing as we head into um, the second half of July and potentially early August. Uh, this includes a pretty <clears throat> powerful heat wave that could be occurring across the United States. Um, you've probably been hearing a lot already about uh, very hot temperatures this year across the United States. And if you haven't, I do believe it's just going to get worse across certain areas. Not everyone will be equally affected, but this is definitely something that um, uh, I, I just want to show you the, the data from the models and I think it speaks for itself as to why it's uh, a worrying pattern in my opinion. Okay, so before we uh, get into this, um, I do, you know, welcome to the channel. I am a weather <clears throat> hobbyist. I'm not a professional meteorologist. Um, obviously for official weather info, always direct yourself to the National Weather Service and um, Climate Prediction Center, Storm Prediction Center respectively for their forecasts. So, um, if you just are a weather fan, you know, a weather enthusiast, uh, check out the channel, obviously, see if you enjoy this video, and, um, you know, I encourage you to, obviously, maybe leave a comment or whatnot. Alright, so, <clears throat> let's start, um, let's start off by showing you the GFS. So, first off, I want to show you a few things. I want to first show you the temperature anomalies, and then I want to show you the temperatures um, themselves, you know, the actual uh, thermometer reading, because the anomaly is basically a reading of how above average a certain temperature is, or below <clears throat> at any given time, based on a average that is derived from well, the climatology of 1981 through 2010 for any given location. So, you know, if it averages 80 for Chicago and it's 75 during the day, then, you know, that's negative 5 degree anomaly. So, um, notice that right now we do have a, a pretty uh, warm air mass across uh, the western United States. Nothing, I would say, totally extreme. Do note that we do have pockets already of pretty extreme warmth across several areas. However, they are uh, rather limited. Um, nonetheless, you're, um, even these, I guess, um, you know, pockets are still d definitely dangerous for those areas. <clears throat> that are uh, I guess affected by them, especially if it's for a longer duration than just uh, you know a few days or even one day. So uh, as I put this, put this forward, I'll just let this run. Notice we have these extreme flare-ups of anomalies that are you know close to off the charts, and that's the thing with this heat wave. That you know there are areas that are you could see in at this given time, Ohio, Pennsylvania, they're just warmer. But then there's also areas that just randomly flare up. Well, not really randomly, but. Essentially, if you look at this map, it is rather random. You could see um, there are, you know, I mean that that's that's an extreme pocket of very warm air, and uh, they they do sometimes linger for several days, seemingly without motion, or they could just you know vanish. So, um, I guess that's a good thing that um, they aren't really uh, slow, but. Um, at the same time, if you get a consistent pattern several, several days in a row of such anomalies, can definitely uh, definitely take a toll. And notice, as I as I put this forward, what we do see is right there. I don't know if you noticed that. Look, so you know the United States, it's 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 pretty pretty warm, pretty cool, depending on where you are. But that little pocket right there, um, you know, that's another area of flare up that's literally reaching the anomalies off the charts. It is a pretty small area, but it's definitely there. And just to show you how warm this actually is, um, let's go back to 1 p.m. So this is the daytime highs for a lot of these areas. Look at those 110, 115, right? Obviously, this has happened before these uh, temperatures here. Um, uh, th this would definitely be close to a record. And with a lack of precipitation, you know, the yields of uh, corn or whatnot that is growing. You know, this time it's uh, pretty much <clears throat> reaching its uh, peak, peak growing, peak growing season. It's the height of it. Um, such such anomalies are definitely not favorable. And let me just play this. Uh, let me just play this forward, and you can see that throughout the coming days, it's, it gets hotter and hotter, and this area of extreme anomaly grows. And then everywhere else, it's just warm, which again is still pretty uh, again pretty warm by itself. But these anomalies are just what's very worrying. Do note that we do have several layers of cooler air that could infiltrate in that that will provide some much needed relief, but not for everyone, unfortunately. And you can see a lot of areas to the south, especially, are stuck with this heat. Um, I could show you something like the European model. The GFS, some people don't like it. Let's take a look at the European. A very good model. Again, you could see it already mainly a dominating warm pattern. What we have right now, a few pockets of cooler air where, <clears throat> where we have a cloud cover and, you know, little little cold fronts, I guess, passing through. But notice, as I put this in a long range, we get much, I mean, it's pretty evident that it's much more of a <clears throat> warmer pattern. And the anomalies, again, they are moderate to strong in some areas, especially right here across the southern plains. And that is where there could also be pretty much non-existent rain. Let me show you some of these two-meter temperature shaded, so maybe gives you more of an impression when you see it on the, you know, in, in the 90s and 100s. So, this is um really, uh, this is Today, today's temperatures, this is now Saturday. I don't really want to go day by day, necessarily, because I just want to show you um, uh, 
I mean, I do want to go by day by day, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, specifically say this is Saturday because this does change. And for, again, official weather info about how hot it will be in your area, go to the National Weather Service. I'm just here to tell you that there's a hot pattern coming up for a majority of the United States in the coming weeks. Um, pretty much already starting now, especially across these areas. Notice, I mean, hundreds each day, right? Um, across Texas, that isn't anything new. However, um, some of these anomalies are going to be getting into the 110, 111. That, that's definitely something that is not um, usual for Texas to have for a stretch of several weeks. Such temperatures, especially with lack of rain, that just does not fare bode well. You can see right there, 112, 113, potentially Essentially, again, this is the European model, cons a rather conservative model, um, and you can see even further up north, we have pretty warm temperatures, and the European really trends towards this warmth. I mean, here it's relentless, but look, Montana getting in those hundreds, um, all of Oklahoma, Arkansas, into Missouri, um, even into towards the end into Illinois and Michigan, you can see getting some of those uh, really, really warm temperatures. So it does seem like we are going to be heading into a very, very, very warm time period. Um, you could see the widespread 90s, um, you know, hundreds near the Dakotas and even Montana. And just to, you know, I guess make this even uh, make this even worse, if this was a wet pattern, maybe that wouldn't be that bad. However, look at this area, the area that could be seeing almost 100 degree um, uh, temperatures for the next, you know, several weeks will get not a single drop of rain, right? So this area will probably quickly get plunged into some sort of a drought. I do know that there already is a drought here, so it probably will get uh, just much worse. Um, and you can see even the rains up here, you know, I mean, an inch of uh, inch of water for uh, the next several weeks with such hot temperatures for any of these areas is really just not that much. Um, so, uh, you know, the forecast is just not, um, <clears throat> not, uh, not, not really bringing, I guess, good news. Um, again, nothing to be, I guess, super, you know, scared about, but definitely something to keep in mind, right? Uh, you know, uh, I guess water shortages may begin across cer uh, certain areas, uh, especially right here, Oklahoma, <clears throat> Kansas, Texas, and just something to keep in mind, uh, I guess, going forward. You know, just better to be safe and sorry uh, with the information that I, uh, I try giving you here. But let's take a look at the GEFS. So these are just a bunch of models combined. So it's not just one model. It's many. I think it's 31. And, you know, it just goes to sh it shows us, I guess, a more average look at what the models are thinking. So I'm just going to run this forward. Notice that they do trend towards more of a warmer pattern. There are several pockets of cool air. They don't really last long for any given area. Not more than several um, days. And then you can see these these warm anomalies just spread and continue and you go further and further out the blue becomes less obvious yes there still will be pockets of cool air at any given time uh, you know across the united states but again that's not really the point the point is that the heat will be a lot more extensive a lot more prolonged than any cool weather will be and obviously cool weather wouldn't make it dangerous but the heat does 8 to 14 day outlook uh, climate prediction center so these give out uh, these um, you know folks <clears throat> they uh, work with the best models best data and they give out these uh, long range outlooks i guess and you can see that from day 8 to 14, so really, you know, pretty much the end of July here, um, you can see that not a single area of the United States is below normal, at least what they're predicting. Um, well, I guess uh, at least the lower 48, Alaska does seem to be a bit chillier. Notice maybe across the areas where the monsoons are, there could be a bit chillier weather, but again, even there... Even there, they're showing uh, pretty much above average or at least near normal. But yeah, that's a very warm forecast. You can see one area right here, right here, and across the northeast. And the worst thing is, again, is it looking pretty dry? There will be a few lucky areas of, um, I guess, wetter weather across uh, the northeast. But um, even that doesn't seem too, um, I guess, too certain. Notice 6 to 10 days out. So this is a bit less further out. 21st through the 25th of July. Alaska being chilly anywhere else. Especially right here. Again, the epicenter. Just extremely warm temperatures. Not good. And in terms of precipitation, very dry here. Dry across the west. Near normal, you know, across these areas. Again, that's, just, that's not enough. Especially with temperatures that are going to be uh, pretty confidently above average. And again, the monsoon area, you know, I mean, the southwest does seem to have a decent forecast and as well as alaska and maybe portions of the northeast and east coast but otherwise yeah this is definitely a, <clears throat> a forecast that uh, does not bode well i could show you some of the 
some of the temperatures like even for a day like today which again the heat is already here a lot of the united states is above average but i wouldn't say that it is um necessarily in the worst of it and you could see even like a day like today kansas is already 105 hundreds widespread hundreds on the southwest as well and i think that will only continue if not again get worse with a very very minimal rain um and even if the rain does come it will be in thunderstorm fashion so you know one area gets flooded the other one gets nothing and you can see tomorrow another day of extreme heat um and that just seems to go on for pretty much at least several weeks so definitely not good for these areas and in fact i want to show you what the drought monitor had updated yesterday as they think a good portion of the united states could be plunged into drought or at least made worse and i want to show you that so this is what i wanted to show you this is the current <clears throat> drought monitor so this is what where the drought is uh, currently and notice obviously the southwest is uh, in a pretty pretty bad state though i do want to note that arizona and new mexico have gotten a lot of relief from the monsoon same with colorado so you can see that the situation there is uh, still not horrible it is way more worse across um you know nevada utah and uh, california notice texas uh, most of it is in a pretty bad state same with extreme eastern uh, new mexico and uh, you can see Oklahoma is also in a, uh, I guess, uh, not, a, not a horrible state, but definitely there are pockets of drought beginning to develop even further into Illinois, Indiana, you can see across the Northeast as well, um, and the Northern Plains actually this year are a bit, uh, quite a bit better off than, um, a lot better off than last year, but you can see these pockets are developing here. And while the upper Midwest doesn't seem too bad, they could get a, a decent amount of rain, so that could keep things uh, decent. You know, not make it completely uh, bad, <laughs> if you will, but these areas right here is what I'm more, most concerned about, and so is the drought monitor. I want to show you the, the outlook now. So, um, let's see the outlook. So, this is what they think will be happening in the future. Notice, uh, first thing that catches the eye is this thing. Drought remains, but improves. I think, again, that will, um, maybe even with the monsoons, they look very wet uh, and very sustained, so I do think that um, this may completely just remove these areas from drought, which would be a very good thing for these areas. But um, again, Texas right here into Missouri, into Illinois, Indiana, I do think these areas will be uh, developed. And I, I Honestly, I would include probably Kansas and Oklahoma here as well. I mean, the amount of heat that they'll be getting with the uncertainty of a very little rain probably uh, will plunge them into drought. I mean, I guess what they're going off of is that these areas already... No, but then they would say drought persists. So, I, again, I do think these areas will will fill in with a drought. I would say less so maybe these areas. And these areas look like they could be a bit wetter, but still um, obviously hot. And this heat, you know, while I showed you the GFS, at our, you know, 228, it's a bit unreliable to see exactly where this heat will be in Illinois, Indiana. What you can pretty much safely assume is that there will be a lot of it and there will be somewhere in this area. But, you know, the exact highs for individual cities or regions, it's a bit too far out to predict that. But, yeah, I mean, some of these, especially during the night, I mean, ridiculously high anomalies. You know, you're, you, during the night, 1 a.m., right? I mean, you could be in the 90s across Kansas City. You have absolutely no relief from that. And the humidity will probably be high, um, as it always is, with uh, probably no thunderstorms. So, <laughs> yeah, you can see right there. So, um, you know, because if it's drier heat, then it, it's tolerable, still bad. Um, and yeah, I just want to actually look in on that image right here. And let's go back to the two meter temperature <clears throat> shaded just to show you some of these extremely, I mean, look at that one. Those colors are, uh, you know, that's something you see in the, in the desert Southwest and not really the Midwest. Um, and notice, look at that hundreds, uh, pretty much widespread, you know, uh, across mo much of the Midwest. Um, you know, this is definitely something that uh, you wouldn't really want to see, but it does seem more and more probable as we go forward. Um, you know, the European at this uh, exact time frame has uh, a bit of a different a glance still above average, just maybe a bit uh, less, but again, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, even if it's a heat that's more uh, in the 90s and uh, you know, low, uh, mid to lower 90s versus the hundreds, it's still very potent for the Midwest and forget it about the South, you know, the South Central US, that just doesn't look good whatsoever. Um, and in terms of uh, the precip outlook from the European, I think I showed you this again pretty measly. You know, the southeast may be picking up a bit, the, the, the mid-Atlantic, I guess, uh, the northeast, Ohio Valley, anywhere else, it's pretty measly. Um, monsoons here, that's going to be good, but yeah, nothing, nothing, you know, this could change pretty drastically. Uh, you know, if you were to take a look at the GFS current outlook, this is what it shows for 384 days, not that much, but I think just yesterday it showed, yeah, you could see quite a bit more, so we'll have to see, you know, keep our fingers crossed, but even with, you know, an inch of rain with temperatures like 115, that, you know, an inch of rain would have to fall every few days in order for things, you know, to keep up with the evaporation that will occur at those temperatures, so we'll have to see. Again,
again, you know, I don't want to scare people. I just want to warn you that it, it, a, I think a tougher time period is coming up in terms of the temperatures. And a lot of people don't like the heat. Um, and even if you do, I think this will be just a bit too much. Uh, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya.